That's all we need to see. How about that, everyone? Okay, for all our visitors around the world, this is Port Phillip Bay in the height of snapper season, and that is what it looks like. I'm zooming in there, we got away from those boats, but have a look at this. Just miles and miles and miles and miles of boats, everyone. It's crazy over there. Thousands, literally thousands of boats. And up to this way, we have the city of Melbourne. Alex Greer, welcome to UFish TV. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what are you meant to be? Some sort of plastics hero or something, eh? No, no, not at all. Brim fishing on Paul Phillip, eh? Sure am. Bit of, bit of brim fishing? Pretty good at it, I hear. One of your specialties. Yeah. Yeah, ABT tournaments and stuff. No, no, I think you got me mixed up with someone else. Candle Creek tournaments. That's right, that's more like it. Alright, Alex is on plastic duty. The Man Mountain is on... What are you doing? Uh, setting a spread of baits out. And then I'm going to grab a plastic rod too. And the goal of today is to just come out and show our friends around the world what happens on Port Phillip Bay every spring huge influx of a fish called Pagras aratus burst into Port Phillip Bay through the heads we know them locally as reds, pinkies, big reds, snapper and when the word is out that they're in and the weather's good like today that's what happens bazillion bazillion boats you don't have to fish in the boats but even if you do you still catch fish and that's the, the irony of it but it is nice to get a bit of your own water because you just don't get the idiocy going around you with boats driving over your lines and all that sort of stuff. It's like scenes from Jaws when they put the bounty on the shark. You remember that? Well, that's a bit what it's like out here. It's frenzied. But we have rules. We're only allowed to catch three fish each over 40 centimetres. Or 50 centimetres. Was it 40? 40. Over 40. Um, so today our, our goal is not just to come and show you what's happening out here, hopefully get some rods buckling on bait, but the, but the main thing we want to achieve is some personal achievements and that's catching some big ones on plastics. So Alex is working the Loomis and he's working a squidgy and Dave's going to be working, would you believe, a squidgy and a stick bait, a sinking orca stick bait. So we're going to try a few different things. My job today, if I'm lucky enough I will get to catch a fish, but my job is to film anything that happens. Now I'll turn the camera on. What's going on there, Dave? Finally had a bait take off. Oh, we're going to run out of line. Don't let it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one reel that doesn't have much line on it. Yeah, because we're very professional how we spooled them all up. <laughs> yeah, well, I do recall saying last night, I think we should take that reel out, but um, evidently no one did. Including you? No. Well, we came in pretty late, didn't we? Oh, well, it's a good start, but it's only the first set of rods, mate. Yeah. And a good mate over here, Terry. Hey, real, let's just zoom in to Tez. He said, fish somewhere near us. There's good fish going here. And um, sure enough, he was right. That's a pretty good fish, it looks like. Yeah, it is a good fish, mate. So we came out here to get them on the lures, but um, we've just got a few baits out while we're waiting and also it's going to help us gauge when they're in the area and feeding. That's right. So right now it's probably a good time to be casting. Nice buckle mate, she took off didn't she? Yeah it did. It's a good, fairly good fish too. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot, do you have any idea what rod and reel you're using? Yes, it's a Shimano... Yes, no. <laughs> Ballistics Pro. There we go. It's a good fish, mate. Yeah. Look how fat it is. Very pale fish, isn't it? Well... Do you always let them swim under the boat like that? No, just this one. Are you going to uh, let him? You're going to carter it? I'm cartering. Well done, mate. And there you go, mate. That's a beautiful fish. He'd probably go about four kilos. Probably a bit more, I reckon. Yeah, well, actually, they're very good condition. And that's the thing. Even though 
they only look for, they've been weighing, you know, a lot heavier than they look. It's a good start, mate. What are you going to do, keep that one? Uh, yeah, I might. Uh, just because we're in a bit deeper water and he came up fairly quick, he's probably not, not perfect for release, so I'll, uh, I'll keep this one. Yeah, no worries, mate. Well, it's a good start. Yeah. Everyone, that is a Pagrasaratus, Paul Phillip Bay snapper. Beautiful looking fish. Did you ever hit? <laughs> Alright, so we've got the plastic on. Now you got a pilchard pattern on there and that fish took a pilchard, so... Was it a definite snapper hit? Yeah, definitely. Interesting. It's too busy looking at Dave's fish. Now we're going to talk. Got oh! It. Well done! Live! Hook up on plastic! Oh, 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 oh. Nah. Dropped him? Yep. Oh, mate. What a cracking hit. <laughs> there you go, everyone. He'll come back. Show us what lure you're using then. We'll get it straight back out of there. Squidgy flick bag, pilchard uh, pattern, and smothered in X Factor. Very crucial. Get some going. Oh, As nice try. Maybe a bit more drag, eh? Oh, was that pretty tight? <laughs> it is good, tight, isn't it? It's a good fish. <laughs> I reckon he didn't feel that. You don't reckon he felt it? Nope. Just had the plastic? Yep. It's a big plastic. Chances are he had half the plastic maybe in his mouth and not hooked up completely. Um, hopefully he didn't feel the prick. And he's still hungry. I'll tell you in a minute. Good work, Alex. Good work, mate. That's why you're here. I, what did I do? I rang last night. I said, we need some talent on the boat. Someone that can actually handle a plastic rod so I can film. And I looked through my phone and couldn't find anyone, so, so you got stuck with me. Scrape the barrel and we got you. <laughs> right. I heard that. <laughs> Good work. That was exciting. And there you go. What a shame. That was, we lived for that moment, for that take, and we caught it live, but didn't stay connected, and that sucks. It just happened. Sometimes they just grab the lure that hard to kill it before they inhale it. He didn't have it down, so I was thinking we just pulled it off him. There was no solid hookup. Geez, they hit hard. The snap in Port Phillip Bay, something about Port Phillip Bay, they just love pilchards and small fish baits. I truly believe they're predators, they're angry predators and they are bullies to the local fish community. And they, just, they, just mow, they just mow over an area like grazing angry predators and just take out everything. And he's seen that flick bait and smashed it. We'll just stay with Alex until this happens because we think it's going to happen. It's called a flick bait. Right. It's just like a dead sardine or a pilchard. That's what the spot, spots represent. And as it goes down, you have to impart the action on it. It doesn't have any inherent action. It doesn't have a wiggle, it doesn't have a paddle. So basically, we're going we're gonna to impart the action. And that's where the braid on the sustain comes into its own. The braid keeps you really good contact with the lure. So we're just going to put down the cube trail with those cubes. Now, those cubes we get near the bottom there. So I'm going to send this down with the cubes. All right, so it's down on the bottom now. Probably back about 35 metres. Now, in the past shows, we've shown you how we use the wriggle tails, where I usually just pick the rod tip up like that, worm it along the bottom like that, and the inherent action in the lure just makes the tail wiggle, and then settles back down and comes up and wiggles. To me, that probably looks like, you know, I would imagine they think that it's like a worm. This is a pilchard, so what we're going to do with this, is we're now going to lift it off the bottom, once or twice, give it a rattle, tattle, tattle, and then let it sink again. So take some line off and watch it sink back down. This is when you watch the line. If the line gets pulled tight very quickly, you know what that is. It's a fish. And that's why we run brightly covered line. I like the orange line. The orange power pro in the green water stands out. It's back on the bottom now. Now we lift it again. Bang, bang. Let it sink. So basically, lifting off the bottom, letting it shake. Oh, and I'm dying, and I'm just going to fall back to the bottom. It's amazing how often they'll grab it as it falls back down. And it is so exciting. I think that's a buckle, boys. Do you want to hit it, Al? I'll give it a second. Give it a second. This one's on too. Double, double buckle. That one's on. That one's on. 
Put that one's on. That one's on. <laughs> Double buckle. This is when you've got to keep working that plastic. Put it in the hole and it'll work the plastic. <laughs> it's too tempting. <laughs> oh, serious. Oh, he's got it. I just cube too. Cube. Do you work that plucky now, Dave? Good fish? Yeah, he's. I'd say it's a good fish because it's not knock carrying on a bit. It's just yeah, a lot heavy. Yeah, just a. Yeah, he's not bad. Slightly lower rod, mate. Not at all. It's funny, you know, we just said they got a bit quiet, but they're moving around in the area, and we've got a tide change coming up in 20 minutes. So we kept the cubes going, and two rods went. Okay. That's a good red. It's yeah. a good red. Yeah, it's alright. Nice one. Now, I might net this one, looking at that. No, the net just looks good. Well, love. keep working that plastic, Dave. Yeah. Well done, Al. That's a quality fish. Yep. Oh, yes. Here we go. Well done. It's happening. He slammed that. <laughs> oh, that's an awesome feeling. He nailed that bait so hard. We, oh, had, a, we had a hard day yesterday, <laughs> mate. <laughs> we had a hard day yesterday, didn't we? It was very yeah. rough. Yep. We had very limited success out here. We went home, thought about our plan of attack. Let's come back with pilchard lures. Yep. Because we saw boats catching fish on pilchards. Sure enough, it's happening. Might get a few more of those pilchards going down with the cubes, I think, after this. Yeah. It's not a monster. Like the one Alex had on was ripping line off. Yep. Colour already, Dave. Yeah. Mind you, it's not like gear. It's a solid rod. That's a good fish. Yeah. That's a real snapper, mate. Well done. Beautiful. Woohoo! Oh, let's get him in for some picks. Well done. The name on your shirt says it all, mate. Because that is a Shimano lure. That's a squidgy. Can you see that? Just swing his face around. He smacked it. I reckon we can do better than him, mate. He's only about three kilos. Yep. But just shows the excitement. That's a plastic PB for me, so that's grouse. Hang on a minute, I just got to embarrass someone. What was uh, that? Never hand the rod over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I told you to stay. I was tempted to grab the plastic rod and put it in the holder. I did say, put the rod in the holder and keep going. Well, well you know, you just got to know how to work the lure, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep working. This is only the beginning, I'm sure of it. We've got a whole day out here and the snapper are in force. Yep. Well done, Dave. I'll get a photo for you, mate. Yeah. There we go, mate. Well done. So he's, again, only a, probably a four kilo size fish. But um, they're the ones we want to catch on plastics, mate. If we catch them that size or bigger, we'll be very, very happy. You're the luck machine. We've had a half bad day today. Let's bring in some luck. We brought Alex on and bang. Bang. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Woo! Yep, she's a buckle. It's mine. Okay. Well, we've got a bit of a we've got a bit of a hot bite going on out in Port Phillip Bay. We've basically only got two rods in water. I just had a plastic snatched out of my hand doing nothing in the but just holding a talking to the boys. It's giving us an idea. So after our break, we're gonna come back. We're going neck level. You heard it, neck level. Full full of base snapper style, half air break. Woo! Nice fish too here, boys. Just before the air break, you saw Dave hook up that beautiful snapper on a plastic. It's good for our confidence, because that's what we aim to do today. And to be able to come and do it on camera, that's, that's the double whammy. So it's really, really good for us. A few key things happened just before we hooked up though. Let me explain what's going on. All these boats, and let me say there's thousands of them, the snapper are out, spread out, not school up, they're spread out on the mud and they're just mooching around looking for feed, like angry 
prehistoric beasts. And anything they see that they can eat, they'll eat. And we knew that there was snapper had come past us because they circle around and they'd come past us because a couple of the other rods had buckled. And just before that, we just got a you know, handful of cubes going. So often the cubes will inspire them to move in on the cubes. They get there to see the baits. Obviously then the two rods went. We hooked up those fish. Alex was silly enough to actually take his hands off the rod and grab a buckle and not work the plastic. Dave just swooshed in underneath him and picked it up. Now he kept working that plastic in the cube trail. The snapper saw it. It looked like a pilchard, but probably better than a pilchard because it was moving and live and it got nailed. The goal of this show is to get one over five kilos on film. That would be fantastic. They've got a fair way to go yet, but it's not impossible. That fish that we hooked early in the show, that could have been like the one we're after. It had some serious weight, took some drag real quick. Very exciting. Wow. How about that, everyone? A plastic sitting in the rod holder like a bait. While the owner ate barbecue shapes. How's that? Working, though. Yeah, I did. I only just put it in there. Still. It's handy. It's handy, Dave. Very skillful uh, rod application and lure working then, Alex. It was twitch, twitch, in rod holder, barbecue shape, on. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And there you go. That's how good the squidgy flick baits are. When there's a cube trail going, that's how convincing they are. Not a big one. You whacked that. But I tell you what though, it's only a matter of time. You're on two, Davey boy. That's the squid again. There we go. And we've got colour over here. As you can see, lip hooked. I've got the GoPro. Gee, that's got weight. Got a bit of weight on in. That was a big piece of squid, Davey. It was a giant, it was a mega bait. I just stuck that out. So I'm just going to put it out pausey style, he says, because yeah. that's what pausey would do. The biggest, most stupidest, dumbest piece of bait. Yeah. And that's what pausey does, stupid, big and dumb. <laughs> and that's how he catches big. Well done. In the end, he just couldn't be stuffed, put his fingers in it, so he just whips it and just holds it in. That's how you Or you play around with your plastic stick and then go talk to Stretch. Good fish? Yeah, I, I haven't moved it yet. Like, it, it hasn't howled at all, but I haven't moved it. It's heavy. So he's coming up pretty easy then. He's just choking. Oh, he's foul hook. That's what happened. Ah. Tricky. Have a look at the teeth mark in that. The damage. They've hit the whole length of lure. They crunch it up, they bite it, they squeeze it, they rip it. And even on the head of the lure, there's, there's like dints. All right, so that's what we call a data head. Not a big fan of the ball heads, love the data. We just got the blood knot straight to it. That's just generic green line you'd buy anywhere like in Kmart. And there we go, a damaged squidgy flick bait. Yeah. I can't get to the rod. That's definitely buckled, he's not. Oh yeah. That drag is locked because there is no line left. I'm going to leave it locked. <laughs> Look at the line, guys. That's what happens when you don't maintain your reels going into snapper season. There's literally one wrap on there. So it's locked drag. It's it's everything or bust. You should do a Jason Taylor. All right. Oh. That's, that's plastic in the holder. Yep. Oh, plastic just, in the holder. I just put that one down. Nice one. Ooh. This is a serious fish. This thing wants to rip the rod out of my hand, I'm telling you. Can't let him take it though. And this one took off like a bullet. I can't let him take it. We can't let him cross because Braid will beat me. <laughs> cross them. No! <laughs> <laughs> These squidgy flick baits have been awesome. I'll let my fish go at the back a bit, right? Because I don't want them to cross. Move over to the left, Alex. Yeah. Turn to me! Camera. Rotate your body, fatty. You <laughs> Listen here. Lauren Hardy are giving me a lecture on where to face on the camera. I just really want to get this fish in. I think it's a quality fish. It's probably Rotate uh, body. Yeah, it's probably back. gonna be better than what we've seen so far today on the plastics. Actually, I'll probably definitely say it is. 
It's got a bit of weight to him and he just really is not going to give up in a hurry. Now I don't want to bully him too much, we're on pretty light gear here. And now we're getting some colour. And he's a good fish. He's a very good fish on plastic. Yep, as you can see, securely hooked in the corner of the mouth with that squidgy flick bait covered in S Factor. And it's non stop here in Port Phillip Bay. Genuine thumper, Brendan. <laughs> I can't believe I just I can't believe I just lock dragged that. I mean literally lock dragged it. It was trying to rip the rod out of my hand, and because we've got no line on it, I <laughs> and I backed that off, it was actually right up there. Oh, man. What a mess everyone. Put him in now. Double trouble! <laughs> You want to fuck your fish? Look how big the other one is. That's a thumper, mate. There's some serious weight in that net at the moment. Oh, mate, you're the lucky boy. You came with us. We needed a change in luck. And you're that change in luck, mate. This is unbelievable. Dave, that's, that's Alex Fisher holder, mate. Yeah, he's done well. That's a good fish on a plastic. That's a five kilo red. red. Flickbait's done the damage again. Wow, they are just dynamite. Who would have thought? Mano, you should be proud. That is a ripping, that is a ripping snapper little. Just turn him out towards the sun a bit more, Dave. And just when you think that's big, come walk over Alex, show us that into the sun. Look at this animal. That is a six height. That's that'd be nudging seven kilos. Definitely. Every bit of it. And he's a heavy fish, he's fat, he's in great condition. Absolutely heavy. Wow. You fish TV. Dave, what sort of a week have we had, mate? Be honest. How did we feel yesterday? Broken. It was. I feel like crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's been a good day so far. Oh, mate, we've had a devastating week. We just had a confident smash, but we kept at it, kept at it. We rang Alex last night. Said, "Come on, mate, get out with us. We need a lot change in luck. I need you to work that plastic rod and look at that fish. Animal. That's the one we want on a fucking seven kilo. Wow." Well done, boys. And uh, all our fish have been coming on squid as well, which is a bit unusual. Yeah, they have. The last few, haven't they? Yep, which we got last night. I reckon the squidgies are keeping up with the squid. The squidgies are going one for one with the bait, no doubt about it. That was a double hookup on the squidgies then, or a double hit. One resulting in that fish, and the other one uh, got off, but at the same time, this massive fish has said, come along. I like that squid right there. He did, didn't he? Alright guys, well let's let's put them out of the misery because they're coming home though for a feed.